Bonjour and hello. Before I start this video, let me just say I'm French. Like, fully. I live in Paris, got a French passport, French blood in my veins. Now, why do I say this? Because I don't want this video coming off as I hate the French because I don't. I love the French. My fiance is French. My best friends are French. My colleagues are French. But today I'm going to air out some grievances about France and the way it sometimes goes about doing things. Because honestly, living here can sometimes be a strange experience. For starters, my biggest bone to pick, and th this is actually something that may be more specific to Paris or, or maybe just big cities in France. There's this attitude, man. I mean, I mean, Paris got an attitude problem and, uh, and it, it, it needs fixing. Now, of course, I don't want to make like a broad general statement saying everybody in Paris has an attitude problem, but it does seem to be more of a problem here than say Tokyo. Let me give you an example. A lot of Parisian store owners don't like people entering their stores. The, the store will be empty. You walk in and they will, and I kid you not, sigh loudly because you've disturbed their, I don't know, general peace and quiet, I don't know. Hello? Ugh, yes. Oh, hi, uh, you guys sell watches, right? No. Oh, okay. Um, aren't those watches right there? No. Uh, I I have money in in exchange for one of those watches. Wait, isn't this a store? Ugh! Fine. I guess I'll make some money. What? Another thing about let's just say doing business in France, and and I actually feel like this is more of a culturally ingrained thing. They aren't big on spending a lot of money. The French are not a frivolous people, which, you know, good on you, no problem there. But they kind of impose that way of life on you. Like, like even when they're selling stuff, you know, if you want to buy like the upgraded version of something in their store, they'll be like, no, 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 mais, mais, mais pourquoi? C'est inutile ça, monsieur. Faut pas se faire avoir comme ça. And look, some of you may think that's like super honest of them to do, but honestly, I just end up feeling kind of judged for wanting to spend my own money the way I want to spend it. Like, let me get the better Wi-Fi or phone plan if I want to. Cause again, back to the attitude thing, it's not like they say it like this. So are you sure you want to buy this? Because in a couple of months it will be obsolete. So, you know, it's more like this. <sighs> really? You're going to buy that? You know, it's way more expensive than the other one. Um, yeah, but uh, it's better. So I mean, sure, yeah, but you're going to pay more money just because it's better? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, loser. <laughs> French people are also extremely vocal. I don't think I've walked the streets of Paris once and not heard some kind of commotion. Either a pedestrian yelling at a car driver or a cyclist yelling at a car driver or car driver yelling at a car driver. You, you, you get the point. We don't, we don't love cars in Paris. The French are just known for expressing themselves loudly. Macron! My therapist says communication is key. And sometimes it's just like, come on, really? Really? Yes? Your dog, can't you see he's in my way? Um, yeah, he's uh, he's taking a sh**. Could you just walk around? Oh God, I can't deal with this right now. I'm going to be late because of you. Um, you, you could just walk around. Do not tell me what to do. Just, just suggest. Ah, I'm sorry, you want me to deviate my perfectly straight path because your dog wants to take a poo-poo? Is this a prank? You know what, f you and f your dog. You asshole. Now you think all of that is bad. We still haven't talked about French administration. You think store owners don't like dealing with you? <laughs> My friend, that is kids play next to l'administration française. A system that I am actually starting to believe was purposefully designed to confuse you and make your life a living hell. Hello, sir, what do you want? Hi, uh, I was told I needed to come here to apply for a license. Who told you that? Um, your, well, your website, actually. Well, we don't. Oh, uh, why does the website say you do? But that's because we do it sometimes, sir. Oh, yeah, but not today. Okay, uh, w w when do you? Uh, generally when we have eggs for breakfast. W uh, which is when? Again? Well, it depends, you know, it depends on whatever we're in the mood for that morning, you know? How, how, how am I supposed to know when that is? A uh, little thing called deductive reasoning. <laughs> Obviously. What? Of course, everyone hates the hassle of going to the DMV, opening a bank account, or filing out apartment applications. I, for one, would prefer a root canal over any of those options. But in France, it's just, I don't know, 
whole other level. And I still haven't figured out what it stems from. You know, like, is it a power trip thing? Like they want you to understand that they're in control or is it like more of a competence problem? I don't know, I just know it's the worst. And you, you piss them off or forget to do one very unnecessary thing. And the next thing you know, you are thrust into an exhausting process of running in circles around the streets of Paris, handing in endless documents that were not even asked for on the website when you checked because duh. <laughs> You should have known, you idiot. And so now your sister has to fly into Paris on short notice to prove that you were in fact born on this planet and did have a childhood puppy named Romeo. Miss you, bud. Anyways, welcome to my hellscape. It is full of paperwork. Now let's look at a specific example of administration française. To rent an apartment in France, you need a dossier, a file. This file must include a justificatif d'identité, an ID, a justificatif de situation, proof that you have a job, a justificatif de domicile, last three months of payment on your lease, des justificatifs de revenu, your last three pay slips, a garantie digital, ou un garant, which is a person you name as someone who will pay the rent in case you are unable to do so. That is the dossier that agencies require you to have in order to apply for an apartment. Like they won't even consider you if you don't have a dossier. And even then, you still have to be the best candidate. And only then will they choose you. I kid you not, the only reason I got this apartment was because the agent recognized me and I told him if he let us move in here, I would do free advertisement for them. Yeah. So, unless you're Julia Roberts portraying a recent divorcee who is finding herself through travel, you're gonna have to jump through a lot of hoops to rent an apartment in France. Let's start off by playing a little game called So You Want To Move To France. Let's welcome our first contestant, Bobby. Bobby, please tell us more about yourself. Hello, my name is Bobby Burns. I live in Toledo, Ohio. I'm 28 years old. I watched the first 45 minutes of Eat, Pray, and Love, and now I really want to move to France. Amazing, Bobby. Okay, listen, you just have to answer one question correctly and you are the winner. Bobby, do you currently live in France? No, I, I live in Toledo, Ohio. Oh, I'm sorry, Bobby. Close, but no cigarette. To live in France, you have to already live in France. <laughs> Wait, what? That's all the time we have, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Come back next week when we will welcome Rebecca to find out if she can move from Paris to Paris. She may actually have a shot. Oh, Paris, Texas. Oh, <laughs> this is no way. <laughs> oh, see you next week. So if you feel like you're being gaslit, good. That means you're on the right track. Now, if you've somehow successfully obtained a residence in France, it's time to get your license, which means you'll now have to convince the French government that you're a human. And here's what you'll need to prove to the French government that you are in fact a real person and not an alien from outer space who has taken the form of an earthling. You'll need to bring your own photo because they will not take it for you there and it better be an ants authorized photographer, whatever that means. A driving license examination certificate, so make sure you've passed two tests, written and practical. Again, you better know French. And then if you aren't from the EU, you need to also provide your residence card. Then you'll need to answer three riddles from a troll <laughs> living under a bridge. Oh, and make sure you don't forget to bring the hair of unicorn and make sure it's French. Now, on a lighter note, after looking into the weirdness and uniqueness of the French government, I found some stuff I wanted to share with you guys. So let me introduce to you some of the absolute weirdest French laws. Numero 1. It is illegal to fly or land UFOs in the southern French town of Chateauneuf-du-Pape. Yeah, you heard that right, UFOs. Apparently, it was passed as part of a marketing campaign to help sell world famous wine. Now, why you need to convince French people to drink wine is beyond me. I mean, I'm pretty sure French baby formula is 10% milk and 90% Grenache, but that's neither here nor there. In 2018, mosquitoes were banned from the French commune of Briolet in Western France. Now, this law was passed because mosquitoes, besides being annoying as all hell, pose growing health risks. The Asian tiger mosquito, prevalent in much of France, carries numerous potentially deadly diseases. It turns out though, the laws had no impact on the mosquito population. Exhausting bureaucracy and weird laws aside, this is still a fan page for France. So here's some of the stuff I love about French customs. And let's start with the art 
of shrugging. The French have mastered the art of what's known as the Gaelic shrug, le haussement d'épaule. The casual yet expressive shrug is a cultural symbol that conveys a range of emotions without saying a word. Hey dude, what's up? What? Dude, I, I didn't even know your girlfriend was a magician. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, man, I totally feel you. Yeah, it's rough, it's rough, yeah. Another thing I love about France is the café culture. French café culture is a way of life. Sitting in a café, sipping coffee, and people watching is a cherished pastime. Cafés are not just places for coffee, they serve as social hubs where friends gather to chat and soak in the ambiance at these terraces. And of course I can't talk about the things I love about France without talking about bakeries. In France, you are never far from a bakery. Bakeries on every corner. And I'm not talking about like gas station croissants, I'm talking about like an actual bakery. The sheer abundance of boulangeries, each offering a tempting array of fresh baguettes, pastries, and bread is an amazing aspect of French life. I mean, I literally have five boulangeries that I could choose from on any given day that are like a block away. Another thing I love about France is August vacation. The French take their summer vacation very, very seriously, especially in August. Many businesses close, and it's actually pretty common for people to take extended holidays during this month. Big cities in France are pretty much empty during this month as locals head to the beach or countryside. So it's nice for people on holidays, but it's also nice for people who stay here and enjoy the quiet city vibe. So anyways, that's that's France for you. I mean, not really, there's, there's, there's a lot more, but that's just things that I chose to talk about today. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for new videos every week, and I'll see you guys soon. Au revoir!